Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, September 4th, and this is Baltimore Weekly, your weekly guide to all things innovative, creative, and tech related in Baltimore, uh, brought to you by GBTC. I'm Sharon Paley. And I'm Andrew Hazlett. Uh, today we are going to be joined by Jeannie Howe of the Greater Baltimore Cultural Alliance. But first we wanted to take a little moment to uh, thank our shareholders who make our work possible here, including this podcast. Starting off today with Millennial Media, the leading independent mobile advertising and data platform powering the app economy. Millennial Media has achieved a solid market leadership position because they remain steadfast in their vision of how mobile devices and advertising platforms should coalesce. With smart people, we build and operate a platform for great success. And we're also brought to you today by Smart Logic, uh, which is a Baltimore firm that builds applications to support clients' unique visions. Since 2005, they've enjoyed working with Brown University, Lancome, ExxonMobil, Brooks Publishing, JP Morgan, and dozens of other companies to create exceptional web and mobile applications. Thank you to Millennial and to Smart Logic for supporting our work and this podcast in particular. Today, so today we're joined by Jeannie Howe who's executive director of GBCA, one of the many other GBCs around town. <laughs> uh, hi, Jeannie. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Sharon. Great to be here. So why don't we kick it off with you um, telling everyone a little bit about GBCA and the work that you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the Greater Baltimore Cultural Alliance is a membership organization that provides services and advocacy to the arts, culture, history, humanities, attractions, and individual artists in our community. We've got a very broad constituency. We serve Baltimore City and the five surrounding counties. And the kinds of things that we do are help to bring the community together and artists together to be able to build partnerships and collaborations as well as to access resources. And we're also responsible for creating a conversation that really helps to support the arts and culture sector and pulls it into um, different mindset for folks and understanding the value not only economically which is substantial but also in terms of the contributions to the vibrancy of our community to um, an innovative culture and to the not just the cultural sector but the culture class. You know that you change a couple of the names around and it sounds a lot like what we're doing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, so you're, you're fostering the community, you're helping to connect large institutions with like, individual artists who are up and coming, um, you help educate uh, uh, you know, sort of artistic enterprises like theater companies or um, right. collectives, you, you help to educate them in how to basically start a business, right? Yeah, that's... That's really correct, and I and I and a lot of the same kinds of um, issues that other businesses have um, are very uh, tuned to the arts and culture sector as well. And so, in emerging businesses and collectives and small nonprofit organizations, um, we find that folks have uh, needs to understand financial management, but they also have needs for space, for example. Um, being and I know that that's an issue in the tech community. Do you? Um, Help, help folks to be able to figure out a way to share space so that they get some economy of scale um, or help them to understand where there might be space available that helps to activate communities in an interesting way. Um, so we really, we really do try to help with that and also look at not just what we, the services that we can provide, but what services might be available out there um, through other organizations like, oh, for example, Maryland Volunteer Lawyers for the Yards to access legal, legal services. Um, so to look at who's already doing a great job of that and help steer our constituency more towards their services. We're also looking out nationally um, for some organizations and some folks who really developed expertise around areas that we don't have to develop the infrastructure or expertise to do, but to build partnerships and bring resources to this community that don't currently uh, reside here. 
and that helps the artists. Uh, it helps the organizations, um, and you know, we're it's it's a it's a big old ecosystem. This arts and culture thing. So um, you know, we we always look around and say more is more. Um, there's there it's good for the large organizations when um, when smaller organizations exist. They're all helping to build market share and audiences. Um, Used to be a very small town in terms of theater. We've been lucky to have Center Stage and the Hippodrome, um, but now over the last several years, we have this really exploding theater scene here. Um, Every Man's been around for a long time, but they've been moving forward into a into a larger space in terms of their business. Um, but we have a lot of young companies too, and uh, in the cultural sector, we like to see that as part of the whole success that they have in, in terms of. Um, of building audiences, but also the impact that they're having on the communities. Um, it's a, it makes Baltimore and the surrounding area the kind of place that businesses want to come, um, and that employees want to live in, and that artists want to stay in. And those are all part of our goals. So apart from the entrepreneurial overlap, what other kind of um, similarities do you see between the arts and culture community and the tech and innovation community? That's a, that's a great question and um, I've been with GBCA for about 19 months now um, and really been trying to learn from other folks who have been out in the field but, but making a point of being in the same room with innovation and technology folks too to think about this question um, and to hear um, in such a terrific and uh, energizing way how interested the innovation and, and technology communities are in what's going on in arts and culture. Um, there are a lot of, as you said, um, the innovation and business pieces of it, the, uh, the cultural um, workforce, um, there's a lot of similarities there, but there's also very tangible kinds of overlap. Um, Part of some of what we're seeing now is a real interest in the maker community, for example, um, which is an incredibly fabulous place where artists, artisans, um, the technology business entrepreneurs and innovators are crossing over. Um, and, and by the maker community, I'm sure your audience knows what that is. But for us, um, it might mean um, people who are doing um, fabrication of different sorts. It, it actually might mean people who are um, working in textiles, um, but they're actually producing objects or products. But they're using artisans, they're training them, and also looking at ways that um, that might impact overall in communities, opportunities for people to become um, a part of the workforce. So that's, a, that's to me a very interesting place and there are a number of folks in the development and philanthropic community who are really um, intrigued by the, by the impact that they believe that those folks can make. Um, and then you have, you know, other businesses where, um, uh, you know, we run across folks who actually come from the arts world and some of their products are arts related even if they're not all arts related. Um, I'm thinking of uh, Figure 53, I think I'm getting that right, mm -hmm. and Chris Ashworth. Uh, that there's an, a tremendous crossover and we have also this community um, one of our goals, of course, is to is is to make it a place not only where we can attract people generally for a workforce, but it's a place where people who are cultural workers can live and stay. They can sustain themselves, um, and and really have an opportunity to um, make an impact in their communities. So we like to see where that crosses over in terms of technology and innovation as well. Yeah, I mean the uh, the example of Chris Ashworth in Figure Fifty Three is one that that we've cited before. I guess he was like the tech guy for the single right. theater company, and then developed these tools uh, for managing theater lighting during performances and other uh, important tasks. And now the, these tools are now uh, sold and used worldwide on the London That's stage, right. New York, etc. And yep, yeah, you know, it's a a flourishing business, and, and he's not the only example of people who are working at that right. intersection. You know, we've had uh, for three years now the the Create Baltimore Unconference that is you know, intended to bring together the, the tech and arts communities to to help Baltimore. Um, and there's a lot of individuals who move back and forth across these lines. It's totally fluid, and you know, and they, they've got a, you know a great inspiration in someone like Steve Jobs, who always emphasized the importance of design in products and in thinking and um, yeah I mean it's it somebody really should do more to get these communities together 
What a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> Although you should be much closer to your microphone because it's kind of hard to hear you. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so Jeannie, why don't you uh, tell us about what's going on on September 9th? Well, we had, a, we had a great opportunity to connect with the tech community, one of our brown bags, where we were talking about mapping, and we're intentionally bringing folks in from Vina and from GBTC to uh, have a conversation about, we'll continue the conversation about the intersection between arts and culture and technology. And out of that, Sharon, thank you very much, was this idea that what we needed to do next was in a more casual setting, maybe with some adult beverages, to encourage people to actually interact on a social basis and maybe start doing some network across those lines. So on Monday, September 9th from 5 to 7, um, the Greater Baltimore Partner, uh, excuse me, <laughs> I can't even say my own name, the Greater, the Greater Baltimore Cultural Alliance and Chief ECC, I'm all flustered now, are partnering for a happy hour um, at R2I on Pratt Street. So we hope folks will come out and join us um, and have, take some time to get to know one another in the community too. It's a really terrific opportunity um, and we feel like we're still at the front uh, end of all of these conversations, at the front end of what all the possibilities are for uh, building collaborations and are excited to see what happens going forward. So let's have an enjoyable evening to get that started. Yeah, it's, it's not a, a, a painful thing to ask. You know, these, <laughs> you know, R2I or R2 Integrated is, is one of our you know, loyal uh, shareholders. They're a great growing firm that uses a lot of design thinking in their uh, digital marketing strategy and products. Um, they you know, really cast a net across the country and across the globe using technology. Um, but they have these beautiful offices mm -hmm. overlooking the harbor um, on Pratt Street. That right. The, what has been known as the Examiner Building. I'm not sure if that sign is still there. It is. Um, no, okay. <laughs> um, Ask Matt all about it at the happy hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's going to be a, a wonderful place to spend some time, ease into the busy September that lies ahead, and, uh, and meet some really interesting people. Uh, yeah, I think it will be a great, a great starting point for many of these conversations or a continuation of some of the things that, um, you know, we were talking about a few months ago, Jeannie, but there are people in the tech community who, of course, have much greater understanding of uh, mapping and visualization and all those things than Andrew and I do. And hopefully those folks and other, you know, developers who work on design-led teams or um, are in creative firms. Hopefully, we'll see them there because we'd really like to, uh, you know, build out this conversation about tech, where tech and art meet together, and um, how that could be a really huge driving force in the Baltimore economy. Since we have this great tech scene and we have this really amazing cultural scene, um, right? You know, it's definitely a town that embraces that sort of like quirkiness. So. I think it's a it's a big uh, attribute of Baltimore. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Well, we're looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, nope, I'm done. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us, and we will see you on September 9th. Um, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Take care. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Okay, we'll see Bye. You soon. Thanks. Well, yeah, you were saying, um, Andrew, we have, like, it's a very busy September. <laughs> it is. For Put us. on your seatbelt. If you're wondering what we were doing all August, well, you'll find out right now because <laughs> we have a ton of things happening, and so does everybody else. Um, you know, beginning uh, today on the 4th, you've got uh, some of the great uh, uh, meetups are back in full swing. There's the Baltimore PHP Beverage Subgroup meeting at Max's Tap House this evening. There's also a really interesting event um, uh, for a little later in the evening at 7 p.m. Technically, Baltimore's meetup is going to present uh, a panel of national tech reporters who happen to be based in Baltimore. And these are you know, some really smart people who you know, write about global tech, and they do it from Baltimore. So this is a great chance to meet these folks, especially if you want have a long-term interest in you know, getting your work out in front of a broad tech news reading audience. They're also going to be talking about the big uh, uh, Baltimore Innovation Week 
which is coming later in the month, September 20th through tw 29th. You can find out about it at the Baltimore Innovation Week website. You can also see uh, events as they're added. They'll appear on, on our community calendar as well at go.gb.tc. Um, and there's uh, every, everybody's uh, pitching in a little bit on that uh, during that week, so check it out. Uh, we go into um, the Rosh Hashanah holiday uh, later this week. Um, and also there's this big thing with uh, some music star floating in the middle of the Inner Harbor launching um, some kind of sports thing, Sharon? Huh? Is that right? There's some kind of sports thing happening in the Inner Harbor with uh, – um, the like the Super Bowling or something. Are you talking about the the start of the football season tomorrow night? Yes. It's not yes. here. Yeah, I know, you but there's so some... vaguely, and you're so confused that now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, the I'm Ravens, just uh... the Ravens do play tomorrow night, but they play in Denver. But the, yeah, but, the, but there's some kind of like big concert here in Baltimore. Oh, and there actually, is? for that reason, the, the Digital Harbor Foundation Tech Center has had to postpone um, a really cool sounding uh, maker movement uh, education event for tomorrow. I have no but idea. That, that'll be on. Keep an eye on their website and ours for all the details about that. Um, then on Monday the 9th, the aforementioned. Tech Arts and Culture Mixer at R2 Integrated. Um, you should uh, RSVP just so we can get a head count, and you can do that um, at the GBCA website or at ours. It's right now the headline on our on our website. Um, then we're, we're kind of looking a little further ahead. Uh, there's the Be More on Rails monthly meetup on Tuesday the 10th. The uh, Baltimore UX, that's User Experienced Book Club, meets on Tuesday as well. On September 11th is the Columbia version of the Tech Breakfast series. Definitely one uh, to check out if you can get to Columbia by 8 a.m., <laughs> which I cannot. But, <laughs> um, uh, but definitely uh, worth checking out. A lot of great people down there. Um, so that, that that's it for the for the uh, you know some of the things that are immediately coming up. But we have another thing that we wanted to promote a bit, um, which is during Innovation Week, and that's this um, uh, an event to really get to the heart of a big issue that people have been talking about in Baltimore for years. It's where technology hits the hits the road. Um, the rubber meets the road. The technology has immediate impact. And that's broadband access in Baltimore City. Um, Sharon, can you enlighten us a little bit more about um, what this event is? Um, well, I will. I will admit that I don't know a lot about broadband in the city, which is why I'm going to this event. Um, but Chris Tanjis, who is the chief technology officer for the city of Baltimore, uh, he was recently interviewed in the BBJ about this. That the city has. Um, hired someone to, or a consultant to come in and look at the broadband uh, the, in the city, check out the fiber ring, and see um, what can be done to make it more robust. Is there a way to contract with a different company um, for provision of, uh, of broadband services in the city? And they're really doing a, um, like a, a very wide-ranging study of what the options are in Baltimore. There were a lot of people uh, a year or two ago who were very interested in bringing Google Fiber to Baltimore and uh, that ended up going, that project went to another city, but sort of in that spirit, um, the city would now like to examine what is going on and make some decisions about how to improve broadband, which of course impacts Everyone who lives in the city and everyone who's working in the city, uh, even if you're, even if you don't live here, your uh, your company is is pretty reliant on broadband. I would I would venture to guess. So uh, since you're watching this podcast, uh, so you can come and hear from Chris like what their plans are, uh, what they're hoping to ascertain through this study, and it will be kind of conversational. If you have questions or concerns about uh, the city's broadband, we strongly encourage you to come. 
Um, it's September 26th. Uh, Thursday, September 26th at 8 o'clock in the morning, and it will be held at City Hall. So um, tickets are very limited, um, but uh, it's a great chance to sort of get like some inside baseball information on the city's uh, broadband and fiber network. Um, and if you want more information, you can just head on over to gb.tc slash events, and you'll see uh, we're calling it Tech Meet and Share, which is a a series of sort of geeky breakfasts that we often host, so um, uh, it seemed to fit into that bucket. So please, please RSVP, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me or Andrew know. Uh, and it's uh, it is it's a critical issue, and people have been talking about it a lot. And this is a chance to uh, move the ball forward. Um, and if you go to gb.tc/events, you will see the flood of things that we've been working on. Um, I did want to mention one other thing before rattling off a couple of those, and that is, as a lot of you I'm sure know already, uh, Betamore, the um, technology and entrepreneurship campus in Federal Hill, has launched this uh, uh, the Betamore Academy, which is going to provide programming skills in a serious, almost academic way, uh, but these are skills that are needed right now. This is immediately relevant education in things like mobile development, front-end web development, back-end web development, digital marketing and sales. These are, these are the help-wanted ads we see everywhere. There's smart people in Baltimore. You can use this uh, academy to kind of connect those two dots. Um, the reason we mention it right now is that on Wednesday, September 11th from 6 to 9 p.m. at Betamore, they're having an academy meet and greet where you can go and find out more about it and uh, see if it's for you. So definitely something to think about. Uh, back into uh, our side of the calendar here. Uh, I, I can't even keep the, the dates straight Just anymore. Just go I and follow look. what my calendar tells me to do. <laughs> but... Uh, September 16th is our National Aquarium Tech Crawl. Are there any seats available for that? Sure. Um, just frustrating people by promoting something that's already <laughs> long sold I think out. there are like three. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So the, the, the first three people who hear this, who register, will get a ticket. Um, so. <laughs> In exchange for paying for it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no radio not style like, contest. It's not like a contest we're running. But, but it's going to be awesome. It, you can look back at uh, previous uh, previous episode of uh, Baltimore Weekly for um, a, a look into pre a preview of what, what we're going to see. Also on September 18th is the September edition of the Baltimore Civic Hacking Meetup. We're going to hear about how technology might be able to stop the cycle of retaliatory violence in inner city Baltimore. Um, also, uh, we're looking forward to the demo day for Hack the Parks. Um, I'm just, I, I have to like abbreviate this, but I'd love to hear Sharon talk more about it. Um, but it's well, you can book me for a future podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look just in a, in a couple of weeks, just scroll down and, <laughs> and you'll see it. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, boy, I mean, there's just too much to talk about, but the other big thing that we're, is coming together really amazingly is Tech Night on November 7th at Port Discovery. It's going to be awesome. Uh, for all of this and all of the awesome community stuff that's happening as well, be sure to visit go.gb.tc, add your event, um, tell us what we're missing, um, and find out about things that, that you want to do. Um, so that's, I, I'm sorry, I'm beat. That's it. Uh, <laughs> and we haven't even done this stuff yet, but, um, that, uh, that will do it for this episode of Baltimore Weekly. Thank you for joining us and thank you to... Um, to Millennial Media and to Smart Logic for your support, along with all the other magnificent GBTC shareholders. Um, and thanks and we'll to Jimmy Howe for joining us week. this week. Yeah, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Take care.